We are in a data-driven world where uh, the, there are two worlds of marketing that have now really bifurcated. Uh, we can put them into gross categories, pretty pictures and data-driven. Pretty picture marketing, all emotion, all about the benefits, all warm and fuzzy, get you an award, television commercial, beginning, middle and ending, rising action, climax, falling action. It's epic, it's fantastic. But somewhere along the lines, a bunch of people figured out that I may not be able to actually understand that narrative. And although as a CMO, my job is to create a narrative, as humans, our job is to create a narrative. This happened because that happened. We love cause and effect. Everybody, we all love it. I mean, it's very satisfying. But a few years ago, as we got deeper into data, we learned something. If these three things happen that are unrelated to life, there's a 74% chance that I'm 83% confident that that other thing is gonna happen. I can score stuff in a correlated way as opposed to a causal way. So all of a sudden I can start building marketing campaigns totally based on correlation of data points without really understanding why things are happening. Just that when these three th things happen, the fourth thing is likely to happen by X percent. And I actually can make a fortune doing that. Literally can make a fortune doing that. In fact, it is so much easier to do and so much more accurate not because you understand it better. In fact, you probably understand it less well, but anybody can go to a percentage and say, wow, you're with a 95% confidence in interval. You are 83% sure this is going to happen. I'll take that bet. I'll take that bet all day long. I'll stand in front of that slot machine. And that is the future that, and that is what digital transformation is about, not only in marketing, but across the board. Now we're looking at things that basically we are going to pull data in and we're going to turn the data to action. And if you haven't got mechanisms to turn data into action across the entire value chain of your business, and that includes customer data, uh, supply chain data, uh, employee data, like it doesn't matter where you're getting the data points. Every place you go, you can apply some level of statistical machine learning, but you don't need to do deep learning. You don't need AI. You can use it. There are tools you can use, but literally statistical machine learning or just straight up stats. You can heuristically do half of this. You can figure out when this, these patterns occur, which is what AI is great at, unsupervised learning is great at. When these patterns occur, there is this percentage chance of this outcome. This is the correlation of the data sets. It is the very essence of what um, the beginning of digital transformation is. The more mature transformations are where we're now starting to leverage machines that are capable of doing what we previously believed was cognitive non-repetitive work or white collar work. Go look at the generative adversarial networks. Go look at the tools that are doing um, Google Translate, uh, BERT, the new, the new uh, transformer. A system that they've got at Google, which has upped their game and translate from a few words to whole sentences, and in some cases, two sentences where they've got context going. Look at GPT-3, another transformer from OpenAI. You can see the very beginning of where you'll be able to hand off some cognitive non-repetitive work to tools and co and, and coexist with them, literally co-work uh, co or partner with these AI uh, models and become more productive. The ripple on effects of that can be felt in the pandemic, where people distributed all over the place. I need people to be more productive where they are. I'm giving them tools to be more productive. So whether I'm in the office or not, the tools are, are evolving and the people are learning to use them. So I've got one person doing the work of a whole department or two people doing the work of a whole department. That's the digital transformation, Tim, that I see coming faster and more furious. question you got to ask, which is, what is the data that needs to be protected at all costs? What is that like the United States government has top secret, secret, confidential and deep unclassified. You may not need four levels of that. But what are the four levels or three levels of of classifications, security classifications, you can't protect it all, you can protect some of it. What are you willing to spend against to protect?
and uh, you got to ask it just that way and then let the experts do it because you I can't teach you to be a cyber any more than I can teach you to be an AI expert I can't teach you to be a cybersecurity expert today but I can tell you that we're at a point in time in the world where you can only protect what it is you decide to protect because the rest of it there's just too many people there's too many attack vectors there's just too much that can go wrong so we can't live in a glass house with a door lock on the internet there's no metaphoric uh equivalent there anything that has a glass door and a lock on the internet has been smashed in you have to live with a moat in iron gates with soldiers protecting it with heavy artillery and poison gas and god knows what else you need to put that you need fort knox for the stuff that needs to be in fort knox and everything else goes in levels of, of vulnerability based on the attack vectors you're willing to expose and as board members you want to ask what data belongs in what bucket and you want to press that you want to press that hard because if you don't you're going to be on the wrong end of that you'll be on the wrong end of that particular gun and that is a brutal gun you don't want to wake up and find your emails on WikiLeaks. You just don't. Every CEO goes to bed every night wondering if tomorrow morning he's going to find the books of his company on the internet. That's your question to ask. And there's nothing else you can believe me. I could tell the cybersecurity firms will tell you they can do stuff for you. They can, but you have to decide what data gets protected. Nobody else. You.